Welcome to the Sandbox Training. This is a medium difficulty activity using quests and objects linked to them. This activity will help you learn to guide players through your gameplay with Objective System UI and icons to help players find quest objects like NPCs, collectible objects, and more. Let's take a look at quests. Quests are located in the Objective System. Quests are used to guide players through your game's story, geography, game mechanics, and more with a sleek user interface. Objects in the game world can be linked to quests so they're easier to find. It's important to note the quest may be triggered and completed only one time. To get started, launch GameMaker, open an experience from a previous activity to reuse some of its logic. To track individual player progression in a single and multiplayer game, SP behaviors and components must be used to send messages to the objective system. MP logic works like SP logic in single player games. Let's take a look at starting a quest. First, we'll talk about locked and unlocked quests. First, we'll open the objectives window to toggle on quests. Let's add two quests to compare when they'll appear on the right side of the player's screen in the objectives UI or the user interface. We'll ignore all other quest settings for now. For the first quest we'll add, we'll name it Auto Quest. We'll leave the unlock quest to auto unlock and the launch quest to auto launch. For our second quest, we'll name it Triggered Quest. For the unlock quest message, we'll click the drop down to Requires Message and we'll choose the message Door A. Open. We'll leave the launch quest to auto. In the last activity, we used an ancient lever object that sends this message, door A dot open, when players interact with it. If we press tab now to test, we'll see the auto quest open at the start. If we go to the lever and interact with it, it'll send the message, door A dot open, to all, which makes the triggered quest appear in the UI because the quest is set to auto launch. Now let's talk about when to launch quests. We'll modify both quests to require a message to launch. For our first quest, the auto quest, we'll change the launch quest message to door A dot open. For our triggered quest, we'll change the launch quest message to night. In the last activity, a logic asset with a trigger volume component sends this night message when a player enters the volume. If we press tab to test, we'll notice that no quests appear in the UI yet. If we try entering the trigger volume, remember that previously the game will shift to night. The triggered quest will also not launch yet because it's still locked. If we interact with the ancient lever asset, it will send the door A dot open message, which will make the auto quest pop up and we'll see it in the UI. But now the triggered quest is also unlocked by this message. So if we re-enter the trigger volume, it will launch the triggered quest in the UI as well. Launch settings allow you to control how many quests may be activated at a time, while unlock settings allow you to control when players are permitted to start a quest. Let's take a look at different quest types and conditions. There are four types of quests, counter, asset death, timer, and wait for message. First, let's set up interactive assets for a counter quest. We'll add an ancient artifact asset and add these settings. We'll now duplicate the asset five times. Let's take a look at counter quests for destroying objects. We'll go to the objectives tab and create a new quest. We'll give it a name and a description. We'll keep the auto unlock and auto launch to default. We'll make sure the quest type is counter and the counter type is death. We'll keep the amount at five and we'll change the tag to artifact. Now, if we hit tab to test, this quest will count the number of objects destroyed with the tag we set it to watch. Now let's take a look at a counter quest with collecting objects. We'll modify our quest a bit. Under quest type, we'll leave it as counter 
but the counter type will switch to collected objects. The tag we're looking to collect is treasure, and the amount is still five. Now, if we test this, when we destroy each artifact, nothing happens. But when we collect each pile of treasure dropped for each artifact that's destroyed, the quest counts the number of objects collected with the tag we set it to watch. You can apply the same tag to collect or destroy different types of objects, such as ingredients, to make a meal. Now, let's take a look at quest states. A quest may be in three states, inactive, in progress, and finished. We can use NPC dialogue to tell players how to start or complete a quest and confirm the quest is finished. For this, let's create an NPC and dialogue. First, we'll add the Adventurer Jet NPC and we'll add these settings. Next, we'll add a Logic Asset with these settings. Then we'll add one more Logic Asset with these settings. Now, let's connect a dialogue to the timing of the quest. We'll go back to our treasure hunt quest. We'll make sure that the launch quest message is q.treasure.launch. And then down on number five, the action after completion, we will make it send a message q.treasure.complete. Now, if we hit tab to test, the quest is inactive. We'll interact with the NPC to start the quest. This dialog is then toggled off by its own message out when we answer the question. Our quest is now in progress. We'll do the task required to complete the quest. If we happen to interact with the NPC while the quest is in progress, we'll see the other dialog, which can be a helpful reminder for players. No message is needed unless we want to trigger a hint for players. Once we've completed all the objectives for the quest, the quest will complete. If we interact with the NPC one more time after the quest is complete, we'll see the final dialogue. Now let's take a look at indicators. We can apply three types of icons to objects that are linked to a quest, a giver, objective, and receiver. These icons are displayed above objects in the game world when an indicator component is applied to the object, a quest is linked, and the quest settings match the type of icon to use. We'll modify Jet and the treasure hunt quest so he can be a quest giver. If we select our current adventure Jet asset, we'll change these settings. Now let's create a custom preset to drop. Since the tag object that the quest counts is a dropped item, meaning it's spawn, we'll modify the ancient artifact assets to use a preset with custom settings that link to a specific quest. You don't need to create a preset for quest items, but we've chosen an example that's a bit more fun for players. So let's create a new object using the ancient treasure asset with these settings. Now we'll save this object as a preset. This allows you to spawn or place an object or group of objects with more complex custom settings during edit or play modes. Now we'll modify all of the ancient assets to spawn this new preset. Now if we hit tab to test, an exclamation point appears above the NPC before the quest starts because it's the quest giver. After we interact with it, a target icon appears above each quest's objective, the ancient artifacts to destroy. Once we have collected all the treasure, the icons and quests are no longer visible. Let's save our experience to reuse the logic in the next activity. Quests are a great way to guide players through the flow of your experience. They can be very simple, or they can have complex systems and hints to help players with connected objects. Counter quests can be used different ways to count what a player destroys or collects. A timer quest can be a fun challenge to survive or defend an asset during a period of time. An asset death quest can be used for a special boss fight and a wait for message quest is extremely flexible in its use since it only requires a message to complete it. In the next activity, we'll continue using the same experience to learn how to make more interesting game mechanics with the game rules system.